Warning! Warning! This is a spoiler review of Avengers Infinity War. We'll be discussing major plot points, so if you haven't seen the movie, but still want to see me create the rest of this picture, turn down the sound. Now, you've been fairly warned. So, I like that you used your um, Star-Lord deep voice no, there. No, that's this. At the beginning. I'm like this. <laughs> So, Joshua, I mean, we, take my ship. we said wow a lot in our last non-spoiler review, but really, this started off and I was like, whoa, what That's did right. I just see? Very, yeah. When we saw Thor Ragnarok and you see the post credit scene, you see Thanos' ship show up. Oh, it's massive. You know, at the Asgard, as the Asgardians are, are fleeing to Earth to try to find a new home. I said, oh my gosh, if Thanos kills all the Asgardians, I'm going to be so mad. Because it's like, what was the point of Thor Ragnarok and yeah. everything that they went through if they're killed? And what do they do? They kill all the Asgardians in the first, like, ten minutes of the movie, all of them except for Thor. So right away, well, you feel like anything could happen in this movie. Did they actually kill them all? I don't know. Or I think they, so. they killed half. Because well, he seems to be pretty big on that whole 50-50 thing. Thanos. Yeah, I know. Thanos is big on the 50-50 thing, but then Thor said that he it, he decimated his people. And usually people use that term incorrectly to mean that completely wiped out, although decimated actually just means to reduce by a tenth. This message was brought to you by <laughs> Jordan Schlansky. So anyway, <laughs> so, Yowch. but... But especially, you know, even with all that, I mean, the all or at least a, a good portion, portion of the Asgardians dying in the beginning, including Heimdall sacrificing himself, himself and Loki then dying. Right. It's like, you know, with this fan favorite Loki, by the far within the first two minutes, it's like, no one's safe. That's right. the feeling you got. And you just didn't know who was, what was going to happen, you know, the rest of the movie. Yeah, it starts off with a pretty good hook. Um... You know, the Hulk is still there on the ship, and he fights Thanos momentarily before you see how powerful Thanos is. And by just demolishing the Hulk, you know, beating right. him down. And that's where Heimdall comes in and sends him to Earth yeah. with his last kind of uh, heroic grasp of yeah. the Bifrost. And but just so interesting is that Hulk, um, Hulk's failure in that mm -hmm. fight against Thanos then um, impacts... The rest of the group and Bruce Banner for the rest of the movie where Hulk yeah. refuses to come out and play. Yep. Right? He just won't fight. Like, keeps saying no. Like, nope. You know, Bruce trick keeps trying to get him to manifest so that he can get involved and help fight these evil forces that are coming to try to, you know, take the Infinity Stones. And Hulk's like, No, thank you. Yeah. You know, I'm not I've gonna, had enough of that. I'm not gonna do that today. So, so that was a really interesting aspect of the movie, I thought, was that that struggle with Bruce and the Hulk. And before we get going, it really must be said, um, so much death was in this show. Yeah. And just, I don't know if I was expecting all of that on such a grand scale. I mean, by the end of the movie, here is a list of the following characters who bought it. First, you know, we talked about Heimdall, Loki, but then you have Gamora, Vision, of course, I think everybody knew that one was coming, uh, Bucky, T'Challa, which was a shocker, Groot, Scarlet Witch, Falcon, Mantis, Drax, my favorite, Peter Quill, Doctor Strange, <laughs> Spider-Man, and in the post credit scenes, Agent Maria Hill and Nick Fury. Yeah, so but this this just leads to the question, yeah. will all of these people actually stay dead in the second movie being released next day, next year? Now, a lot of people think no, because first of all, that's a lot of your money-making characters to kill off in one fell swoop. Right, they're not going to flush that. <laughs> right. But also, be because there are movies being planned with these characters that right. are yet to be made. We've got a third Guardians movie coming, we've got another Spider-Man movie coming, we've got another Black Panther movie coming, right? But at the same time, we know that Marvel's releases movies not in chronological order. Right. And so who knows? Some of these characters that we think, oh no, they have to come back because they're going to be in a movie in the future. Well, maybe that movie will be set in the past, in the past you know, before these events. So well, it's thing, really, we really don't know. No, and especially with the time stone in play, all of that's up in the air. Right, right. And so, so it would be really interesting to see what actually happens. Now, as far as what characters I am absolutely... 99.999% will stay dead. For sure, I feel like Loki is going to stay dead. Probably. I mean, I think they were like, they made that really clear when Thanos said, no resurrection this time. Right. But also, I just feel like because it kind of cheapens what happens if he comes back. 
-hmm. You know, him and Heimdall. It cheapens that whole first part of the movie if they come back. But also, Loki's character arc, I felt like was completing it was completed. Yeah, you know? I think he had a good run, and I think he's probably done. Yeah, it was a very satisfying ending to his story to me. I mean, sad. Yes. You know, but you see the character change from his time in the Marvel universe, uh, cinematic universe, to where it ends here yeah. in Avengers: Infinity War. How he's like, he feels part of something. I think finally, right at the end, and is, well, and made his peace with his history, right? Like can say, I'm I'm Odin's son, but I'm also the rightful heir of um, Jodenheim. Jodenheim, and and you know, just like being able to accept the full picture of who he is, and you know, being willing to to save Thor, mm -hmm. you know, and and all of that kind of stuff. I just I felt like it was such a good, it was a, such a good end good for end. Loki. Yeah. Um, Speaking of the time stone, which you mentioned briefly earlier, what does Doctor Strange see? He has reference in the movie fourteen million six hundred five possible future outcomes for this upcoming battle, but only one was to victory. Before they have this fight on yeah. Titan, which is Thanos' home planet, where Nebula, Tony Stark, Spider Man, Drax, um, Mantis, Peter Quill. Doctor, Doctor Strange, Strange. all yeah. fight and face off against Thanos. Yeah. And he sees all these visions before this starts, and during battle, he, he gives up the Infinity Stone, because it looks the like... The Time Stone. The Time yeah. Stone, excuse me. Well, and it's look, an Infinity Stone. It is I was being more specific. Stone. Thank you. Gives up the Time Stone <laughs> to Thanos, and they're telling him not to, but it looks like all hope is pretty much lost, and everything's exhausted, and he lets him have it. Yeah. And... Um, and he says to Tony, you know, we're in the end game. We're in the end game, you yeah. know, after Thanos has disappeared and gone to Earth for the last No, that was, he says that before, right? Oh, no, yeah, after. that was right. Yeah, right after Thanos disappears. But then, you know, Thanos goes to Earth. Earth. He goes to Wakanda. Yep. And he finds all the other Avengers that are fighting on Wakanda. And they feel like they've won, right? right. And then, because they're like, they're, then they have. But then Thanos shows, shows up. up. And he has all but one of the Infinity right. Stones. Right, and he's there to get the Mind Stone from Vision, which he manages to do. And Thor's last attempt to dis to kill him and destroy him fails. Mm -hmm. Thanos snaps his finger, and with that, people start disappearing. All these characters that we love, right? Yep. And right before Doctor Strange disappears, you know, but Doctor Strange is um, the second to last person mm -hmm. to disappear where Iron Man is, right? Like yep. first, it's Mantis, I think, and then Drax, and then Peter Quill, and then um, Doctor Strange, right before he disappears, fades away, you know, crumbles into dust, whatever's yeah. happening there. Yeah, that um, sounds fine. <laughs> <laughs> he says to Tony, this was the only way. Yeah, this was the only and way. And so, you know, I, what I think that means, I mean, I think they're making it pretty clear that Doctor Strange saw that this all was going to happen, but that this is the way it had to happen in order for them to eventually beat Thanos. Yeah. You know, at the end of the movie... Thanos thinks he's won. The world thinks he's won, right? You know, the yeah. universe. But and, there's and something on points, the horizon that's... Yeah, he, he basically has won. Right. But he there's something on the horizon goal. that will undo what he did or, mm -hmm. you or know. Or something. I don't something. know. Something. So, I mean, lots of things that, that go into, like, just contemplating what Doctor Strange saw. Right. Uh, you know, and some people, you know, in a silly way, kind of argue that uh, Peter Quill is the real villain. For yeah, kind of cocking up the plans. You already said that? No, no. Oh. I, saw, I was going to say, I saw, um, I saw an article where yeah. it was like, we all know Peter Quill's the real villain of this movie. I was like, whatever. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he, he does make a mistake, but he's not the only one in that. You know, what about uh, Gamora, for instance? You know, she gave up the Soul Stone to save her sister Nebula. Loki gave him the Tesseract to save Thor. And, you know, Doctor Strange gives him the Time Stone. And it's supposedly to save Tony, but we really think... He told Tony before, he's like, I'm not going to give up the Time Stone to save you. So we assume that this giving up the Time Stone to all of this that happened was Led part of the future outcome. that Doctor Strange saw that had to happen in right. order for them to eventually win. But, you know, there is a lot of responsibility to go around for, yeah, like... A lot of mistakes. A lot of mistakes. You know, it's not just one guy's blunder, you know. But, I mean, frankly, it all really lies squarely at the feet of Thanos, who is... A master of manipulating and exploiting other people and their emotions. Right. And that's part of what makes Thanos the best oh, yeah. Marvel villain to by, date. By far. Everything yeah. just leads up to this guy and he's just like the king of the baddies. Yeah. And I really feel like more than the Avengers that this is really Thanos' movie. Yeah. 
he is really the star of the show and you know so much so that even the last scene except for the post credit scene of course ends with Thanos yeah. you know it doesn't end with the Avengers it ends with Thanos going and sitting and he's like you know to him it's like his he considers himself a hero right not yeah. the villain so to him it's like his hero's journey is at an end mm -hmm. and he's sitting watching the sunset the sunset and like some know. shanty wigwam kind of thing <laughs> nice for a shanty wigwam. I mean, oh, yeah. it was made out of natural materials. There's no yeah. brick or metal in there, but you know, and I thought, but I think Thanos really is very, a in, in very interesting character yes. in this movie. But very complex, because like, you kind of see in a twisted way his reasoning, but yeah. at the same time, you're like, yeah. You, you well, know. <laughs> what he wants to save yeah. civilizations and to keep resources from running out and all that kind of stuff, those are good end goals, but he's very Machiavellian in how to get there, where it's like the ends justify yeah. the means, no matter what, you know, we need to get to this outcome. And he's very, very slavishly devoted to this one it, this one means, right? There's yeah. only one mean to get to the end that we want, yeah. and that's killing half the universe. This is the pathway forward, and we're taking it. That's, you know. But he really does see himself as the, the savior of the universe, and he's willing to sacrifice anything to Right. That. And he refuses to accept that there could be another alternative right. to his solution. Yeah. You know, he's so sure and doesn't even hesitate to kill the one person he's ever loved, Gamora. Right. You know, that's, but he's thinking, I'm saving everywhere else. I might not be able to save everyone, but I can save every place. Right. So that's what he's about. And, you know, it's all about bringing the balance back, yep. you know. And it doesn't matter how many people have to suffer in order to get there. So there are so many things that I loved about this movie, but one of the main things I loved was the humor. Oh, yeah, <laughs> lots of humor. I mean, which is good. It really balances out a lot of the frankly dark subject matter of the show. Yeah, the last hour don't expect to laugh very much. Like really, <laughs> no. You know, they put that stuff at the front end. There's some stuff in there sprinkled in, but it's definitely front loaded with the laughs. Yeah. What, what were some of your favorite funny parts? Of this show, Josh. Well, Tony Stark telling the Maw, get lost, Squidward. That was pretty <laughs> funny. Get lost, Squidward. That was good. Um, Quill using his deep voice after they've rescued Thor to try right. to show him like he's also a man and not just a dude. Yeah. You know? <laughs> well, I mean, it's fun. You know, it's like it's fun seeing Tony Stark and and Doctor Stephen Strange the banter that they have and yes. their kind of tussle. But it's also fun seeing the the kind of goofier version of that. Yeah. Where actually Thor doesn't feel threatened at all. He's just like whatever. Yeah. He, but then there's Peter Quill like trying to you know, puff himself up. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like and I'm the captain and get away from my lady and all that kind of right. stuff. Right, the bad. Guardians in the Galaxy just as a crew, like what you'd expect from their films. They're funny. Yeah, they're, they're funny, crazy, interesting characters. Right, like and they're just cute. Like Mantis is so cute. Like when um, Peter tells them to put their mean faces on, the face that she makes as her mean <laughs> face is just hilarious. Yeah, it's really good. You know, really good. Uh, Peter Parker, he had some good lines. You know, his endless array of knowledge of quote old movies like Aliens. Ugh, geez, I remember when that came out, so it makes me feel old, but, yeah, and how that he can use these, this pop culture knowledge to help save the day. It's well, really good. And that's one of the things that's funny about this movie is all the references to previous movies in this whole entire series of films that they've created with all yeah. of these characters and how they reference back to those things. And this is one of those ways that they harken back to things that have happened in previous films is, you know, last time Peter had this great idea yeah. in, um in a civil war, you know, to bring down um, uh, Ant-Man, you know, when he's giant, oh, yeah. when he's gigantic, by do, you know, the Wars. Empire Strikes Back move, you know, with the at, at walkers, huh. and then he does this aliens thing in this one, so yeah. I, I like that they do that, that they, Keep it consistent. it's really fun for the fans, too, like people sure. who really remember stuff from previous movies, that they have all this connective tissue between the films. Uh, humor aside, what were some of the other things you liked about the show? I thought it was really fun and cool to see all the different ways that Thanos used the Infinity Stones in yes. the movie. And especially in the last um, couple of battles, you know, the different ways that the Infinity Stones were used. Mm -hmm. But also how, like, um, he used the Reality Stone on Nowhere. Mm -hmm. And how, like, by the time you get to the end of that whole sequence, you understand that... He has known since before they even flew into the atmosphere or whatever of nowhere yeah. that they were coming because he had, you know, he had changed the way that they were seeing everything around them yep. with the reality stone um, from the moment that they flew in. So 
I thought that was really cool. And it was really interesting, you know, seeing the different ways the stones were used and seeing Doctor Strange use the time stone and, yeah. and his powers and everything. I don't know. There's just like a lot of cool effects that came out of that, but just like a really, a lot of imaginative ideas. And they were all different. I mean, they didn't all like, oh, this kind of looks like this one. This kind of looks like that one. No, they all have their kind of their own identity. Yeah. And the way they... Uh, portrayed them in the movie was pretty sweet right um another big spoiler here a surprise cameo by none other than the red skull which that kind of was like oh wow they didn't yeah. see that coming at all no he was one of the guardians uh of one of the infinity stones the soul stone um yeah. i mean just lots of cool stuff in this film um the relationships between the characters i think we kind of mentioned mentioned a lot of that stuff yeah um well, but just knowing, like, in each of the scenes, like, the characters that have known each other for so many years or whatever. Yeah. And how that, just when you've seen all these other movies and you know the history between these characters, how that influences the way that you're seeing everything on screen and how you've seen their their characters and their relationships evolve over time. But also really fun to see characters who haven't met before meeting for the first time. Yeah, that was cool. That was, that was part of the fun of the show. I mean, just like, oh, what's it going to be like when these guys get together? And... Right. How's this going to play out? I mean, it was it was really well handled. The post credit scene, you have to wait till the very end of the credits. They don't do like a mid-credit uh, break. No. Nope. Is Maria Hill driving with Nick Fury and half of everybody starting to disappear and they see all the craziness that's about to start and uh, Agent Hill dies first. Nick Fury pulls out this crazy amped up pager and... <laughs> says code red and hits the send button and he starts to disappear and he drops it on the ground and you see the logo for um captain marvel her crest on her um her suit and red and blue colors so also begs the question how will captain marvel play into bringing down thanos right you know her movie comes out march 8th next year and it takes place in the 90s so it's not in this timeline or not right up to this uh, point in time yet it's going to be before yeah. that. It's going to be the intro. And so it's like, okay, going back and then springing forward. I mean, how's this all going to work? Yeah. Um, it's just, wow. <laughs> yeah, it'll be interesting. But I, but to me, I just feel like Doctor Strange saw all of the events were going to happen. He's, right. And I feel like it was necessary. Getting to that point where Nick Fury was going to press that button to call Captain Marvel and get her attention to what was going on, yeah. I feel like that... Well, it's like, part well, of everything that needed to happen. Maybe that's why Thanos needed to get the glove or the, the, all the Infinity Stones. Because before that, they weren't going to call Captain Marvel in, right? Like, right. they didn't know what was going on. So, well, I feel like also, she's going to play a major role. Oh, where's she been? Right? <laughs> <laughs> where, where are you, Captain she's on Marvel? Movie. I know, I guess. Yeah, only call me when you have, like, the really hardcore stuff. <laughs> Chitari Invasion, pff, you guys got that. I'll, I'll sit that one out. No, but uh, just so many things. Looking forward to it. Um... Wow, again. Yeah. It was a really, really incredible film. I enjoyed it just as much, if not more. The second time. Watching it the second time, even though I was taking copious notes during the movie <laughs> so I could remember everything I wanted to right. talk about during this review. So much stuff. But, and I really love this picture that you did, Josh. Thanks. I mean, I just think it's phenomenal. It turned out so great. And I hope everyone watching this video appreciates it. And I wish you could see it in person because it is even more phenomenal to look at um, in person than in the photos that we have. Yeah, this is the biggest one I've done to date. It's 20 inches by, th or excuse me, 40 inches by 30 inches. And it was a real labor, but I had a really, I had a lot of fun doing it, honestly. And I hope you guys enjoy it. All right, that is it for this long edition of Drawing yeah. Conclusions. Let us know what you thought of the movie down in the comments. If you have responses to any of the questions or points that we brought up, we would love to hear them. Let's have a conversation. Leave us a comment. Please like this video. Please share with your friends. And of course, subscribe. Thanks.